Hello, friends. Welcome Hi. to This Is True Really News. I'm Scott Combs of That's Tony Verkenis, and uh, I think you're Scott the- Combs of That's Tony Verkenis, and That's Tony Verkenis. No, you said of. Oh, that's weird. No, it's, yeah, kind of disgusting too. Yeah. Well, yes. So anyway, um, ignoring all of that, please subscribe and follow This Is True Really News, and I'll tell you a story. And Tony will tell you a story. Then I'll tell you a story. Then to- well, actually, it's the other way around because Tony will speak first because I'm doing the tease. So just get ready. That's what I'm saying. Wrap it up, Omar. This is true, really news with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. Wow. The good thing is that wasn't convoluted at all. The hey, Global Times. I did that right off the top of my head. I would have never guessed. I thought it was scripted and practiced for days on end. The Global Times reports that in China's Fujian province, investigators on a burglary case got a hot tip from a pesky source. You will never guess this source in a hundred million gazillion years. Is it a rabbit? No. I thought it would be a pesky rabbit. Nope. It's a smashed mosquito. That was the same look I had. As police checked out the scene, they believe the suspect may have stayed overnight in the apartment. Why do why do crooks do that? I'm going to stay here, have a dinner, maybe a little beer. Take a bath. Not off. Anyway, among other things, they found a piece of a mosquito coil used to deter insects. Okay. One skeeter met its maker on a wall. Investigators took DNA samples from the smear there. An analysis showed the blood belonged to a man named Chai, who had a criminal record and had been arrested 19 days later for that burglary and three others. Wow. I am. Wow. I don't know if I should be in awe or frightened. <laughs> well, I'm kind of torn. A little both. I'm going that direction right now. Um, from column A, I can see the good side and I can see the bad side. <laughs> I can see, yeah. <laughs> Set the titter way back machine to the year 1964. We'll be visiting. Hey, I wasn't even alive yet. Oh, wait, I was. Never yes, mind. we were. Yes, we were. We'll be visiting with the somewhat famous Hemingway, not Ernest, his younger brother, Lester. Oh. Wasn't there a Muriel Hemingway, too? Granddaughter or aunt or nephew Granddaughter or, or something? Or something? Yeah. yeah. Lester was also a bit of a writer. After all, he wrote, My Brother, Ernest Hemingway. Clever title. <laughs> and used the proceeds to found his own micronation. Huh? He founded his own micronation. I thought you said that. He was able to do so because of the Guano Islands Act of 1856. The bat poop? Island and bird poop in this particular case. Okay. It grants U.S. citizens the right to claim on behalf of the U.S. any unoccupied island, rock, or key where valuable guano, read bird poop used as fertilizer, can be found. On July 4th, 1964, Lester claimed an 8 by 30 foot bamboo raft floating 8 miles off the coast of Jamaica in international waters as his own sovereign land. He ceded half to the U.S. and declared the other half the Republic of New Atlantis. He drafted a constitution. Well, no, what he did was he took the U.S. Constitution and stuck New Atlantis wherever the United States showed up. Hey, why reinvent the fireball? <laughs> he, he created stamps, had his wife to design an, had his wife design an ice flag, and declared shark teeth and carob beans to be the country's official currency called scruples. I think that's a political comment. No. <laughs> Not long after he enjoyed the distinct pleasure of being voted the first president of New Atlantis. Who voted? He and his <laughs> wife, right? Right. We think it was a landslide. It seems the sale of stamps was an attempt to raise funds for maritime protections in the area. How many people lived in the... Nobody. Sadly, within a few years of its founding, the raft became untethered during a storm, drifted out to sea, and was destroyed, consigning New Atlantis to the, well, Davy Jones locker of history. The old Atlantis. Yes. 
or this well this is new atlanta so yeah oh yeah it, it probably it was probably just going home i'm t- go home <laughs> right this is your home <laughs> don't you want to go to your home my golf ball never does now no my neither you're too young look it up adam <laughs> sandler in the united kingdom environmentalists who are a twitchy lot to begin with right have a twitchy problem which is you find them in your backyard generally twitching gray squirrels gray squirrels well they are twitchy. they are twitchy Ugh. the little what was the cartoon wasn't the squirrel named twitchy oh shoot i can't and it was all that. over the place and you didn't want to give him coffee because then he was really all over the place <laughs> yes the little rodents, so fast the artist couldn't draw it the little the little rodents are taking over they're vermin kill them yeah can i say that yes the BBC reported damaging woodland ecosystems and native red squirrel populations. Huh. These are gray squirrels? So squirrels are racist. That's what, exactly what I was thinking. A cull isn't practical because they reproduce too quickly. Cull quicker. <laughs> Use shotguns. Now, however, we had a neighbor. Yeah. When we had Shadow, right? My wolf-like looking Malamute. It, it, yeah. We had... We had raspberry bushes in the back, yep. which I could eat with my eldest granddaughter for mm-hmm. breakfast some mornings. Yep. It was very sweet. And then when Shadow died, we noticed there was no increase in population. That's when we learned that our one of our neighbors has a twenty two with a silencer and takes care of all the vermin, rabbits, squirrels, that sort of thing. From You know, just kept the neighborhood a little cleaner. Mm-hmm. Then we got new neighbors straight behind us next to our neighbor with the gun. She has a pet rabbit. He did there are rabbit, freaking dude. there are freaking vermin all over the neighborhood again because he's got a. <laughs> anyway, right. where was I? Squirrels and the way they produced way too quickly. Scientists have so scientists did what scientists do. Did they figure out a way to kill them faster? No, no, no. contraception. Itty I can't bitty. imagine training squirrels to put on condoms. Itty, and imagine the size of the condom. Now, however, scientists have created a squirrel contraceptive, according to Dr. Giovanni Masai of the UK's Animal and Plant Health Agency. And who the hell ever thought there'd be one? Said her team has developed a vaccine that prompts the immune system to restrict the production of sex hormones. Hmm. Squirrels will be lured into a special trap where they'll feast on Nutella paste. Mm. laced with contraceptives. Ah. The project should be ready to deploy in two years. Uh, the name of the project is Project Squirrel Roofy. <laughs> you can lure them into special traps and you're going to feed them Nutella in a contrast. Kill them. They'll make more. <laughs> well, or when they find out they don't want it anymore, they'll just kill themselves. Yeah, that's true. But then you're going to have, I mean, all those squirrel suicides will be on their hands. Pause. And how would they do it? I don't want to know. Things washed up on the beach. They'd run in front of cars and stand there. <laughs> like that, that was one, one idiot. Yes, was one brave damn squirrel. One squirrel could not make up his mind. And I'm trying to, I'm, and he's twitching so fast back and forth. I don't know where to steer to miss him. Yeah. Or, and I'm not going to slam on the brakes because I've got other cars right behind me. Yep. He made it out alive, little beast. Things washed, dumb. Things washed up on the beach. A bunch of rubber duckies. So I saw a TV show where they, they're they running from a bad guy, right? And I mean, by running, the there's a car chase. Oh, okay. And no, we're back to the squirrel thing in the road. I was going to say ducks can drive. And as he turns the corner, there's either a llama or an alpaca in the road yeah and it's a german show of course so nothing can should die right except it's a movie about an assassin so well that's not the window seems odd coming out of germany you know what i mean so the uh the uh stop that that was not nice apologize to all of germany i used to live there heck with them oh, okay we apologize to germany <laughs> from but germany the idiot right is r- they're being chased by a bad guy. There's a llama in the road, and instead of just running the stupid llama or alpaca, whatever the heck it was, over mm-hmm. and carrying on trying to get away from the bad person yep. who's trying to kill them, yep. nope, he swerves. Car loses control. They about 17 times down a countryside road end up on the beach. 
dead? Still alive and hardly ever hurt. No, oh, no. Nice. Yeah, I told you it's a German TV show. Bianca Chambers wasn't going to leave the state. Hey, hey, oh, wait, hey I'm not started. done. <laughs> Dink. I mentioned rubber duckies and you take over. Have you started? Oceanographer. Where is Rick D's these days? <laughs> Uh, it's basically the bunch of rubber duckies is used by an oceanographer to model and a song by Rick Dees. Yeah. And, um, in any case, he, he's seen some travel more than 17,000 miles. Rubber duckies. A kitchen sink was reportedly found along the shores of a New Jersey beach with, well, just oh, being, no. literally everything is washed up on that shore. I'm guessing. Let's take the, uh, titter way back machine to the year 1941. Robert Ducky, you're the, the one. Inhabitants of an island off the coast <gasps> you make of Scotland, time. awfully fun. We're feeling good, really good, because fifty thousand cases of whiskey had just washed ashore. Aye, and apparently that hall, st- that stash still remains. Not long ago, two bottles were sold for about twenty grand. Really? Mm-hmm. I thought they'd have drank it by now. And things took a peculiar turn along the Salish Sea in Washington State. And the in, Salish in British sea. Columbia. Yeah, it's in British Columbia. Okay. In 2007 and 2008, beachcombers found severed feet still in shoes on separate occasions. Seven separate occasions, to be exact. There's still no real explanation for this series of weird discoveries, though a few theories exist. I'll bet like one that suggests the feet come from victims of a boat or plane crash. Okay. Or a victim of foul play. Victims. Or people who were just weird and said, hey, saw my feet off and throw them in the ocean. Or the leftover prop from a bad German TV show. There is that possibility. Bianca Chambers wasn't going to leave the sleuthing to the Detroit police by gum. Not when her Mercedes was stolen. Well, then she found out they couldn't spell sleuth. There's no O in sleuth. Using social media tips, she tracked her car all over the city, but each time she called 911, police would be ever so late to nab the thief. Right. So finally, low priority call. Finally, she got lucky. Yeah, well, it's hey. Detroit. <laughs> Unless there's a dead body draped on the top of it. I mean, even that'd be a low priority call. Um, where was I? Oh, she got lucky when the man who was driving her car parked and went to get his dreads twisted. And Chambers pounced. Plot literally. Twist. She literally, she walked into a barber shop, according to Fox 2 Detroit, confronted him when he denied stealing her car. Chambers took him down. By Probably dread- by the hair. By his dreadlocks. Yeah. Customer yeah. subdued the unnamed man while Chambers slashed her own tires. So I he couldn't he gonna, drive off. Thought he was going to take off, and I didn't know how long it was going to take the police to pull up. Well, no one ever does, man. Here's a woman. These are. <laughs> she sounds like a straight razor carrying gal. I like her a lot. <laughs> well, both frightened and aroused. She said, "You're just the dumbest criminal. That's all. You're joyriding in my car like nobody was going to see you." She told the perp. Police said the man, oddly enough, has a, a history of car theft. How can that be possible? See, that's why if you play in the NFL mm-hmm. or if you're a thief of any kind, mm-hmm. don't have dreadlocks. Because it just gives people something to grab. Oh, what are uh, you thinking? I mean, I, really. I once saw, I was watching, a, a, oh, who was it? I was watching a, an international rugby test match. And uh, one of the one of the guys had rather long dreadlocks, and as a guy reached up to grab him by the shoulder, missed, and got his dreadlocks nearly twisted his head clean off. Have you ever noticed, by the way, in rugby, hmm? how long hair is few and far between on players? Um, yeah, there's some, but but it, mostly no. Do you know yeah. why? There's so your dreads grab then you yeah. hits. And it's usually an accident. Somebody, it's just happening fast. And in the American League, I blame it on Lance Allworth. <laughs> How? How? He was one of the first to have the long blonde locks flowing out of his football helmet. Yeah. And now, I mean, look at Delvin Cook. He's got 17-foot-long dreads. Dum, dum, I think dum. half of his great runs are screwed up when he steps on them. <laughs> Love you, Delvin. Get rid of the dreads. This is True Really News. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.